In the 1993 interview, rapper Tupac Shakur said, when I got to Oakland, that's when I learned the game. So that's why I give all my love to Oakland. Wait, is that Oakland? Or Auckland? Could Tupac be living just around the corner? Hey, gangsta. Gangsta, New Zealand. What would that mean? Why Bob New Zealand? Straight up gangsta, straight up hard. Oh, boy, yeah. To the show, I'm your host, Baba. I'm from Southside, but I've left the hood and my dog Friday to travel across the country and explore some of Aotearoa's strangest mysteries. Tupac Shakur, one of the greatest of all time. My uncles would always show me his music and I fell in love with him because he's a straight up gangster with a straight up heart. Kind of like my uncle, Uncle Tupac. So I understand what it's like when people are trying to look for clues to prove that he's alive. But just because you want something to be true, doesn't mean it is. So, let's see if my real eyes can realize real lies. I'll be using red string for all of the other cases, but for Tupac, I'll be using neutral, as not to get involved in any Bloods vs. Crips drama. September 1996. Critically acclaimed rapper Tupac Shakur died in hospital after a shooting in a drive-by in Las Vegas. The killers were never caught, but the conspiracy that he faked his own death to get out of the toxic game has never gone away. On May 2011, the American TV network PBS published an article to the NewsHour website stating that not only is Tupac alive, but he's here in New Zealand. The article read, Prominent rapper Tupac has been found alive and well in a small resort in New Zealand, locals report. The small town, unnamed due to security risks, allegedly housed Tupac and Biggie for several years. One local, David File, who recently passed away, left evidence and reports of Tupac's visits in a diary, which he asked to be shipped to his family in the US. <laughs> now the news spread faster than Samoan ladies' gossip, even after PBS pulled the story from their website. Hey, what? They pulled the story from their website? I've got to talk to someone who read the original article when it went live. So I'm chatting to Te Waiarangi. He was just a kid growing up when it all happened, and a very Piggy fan of Piggy. Hey, Te Waiarangi. Te Pup. <laughs> Can you tell me about reading the article? Where were you in your life? It was like years ago. And it, was, it wasn't it was just Tupac either. It was him and Biggie Smalls were both alive in New Zealand. I just, I remember seeing like the news and the headlines. Tupac, I liked not as much as Biggie. If I was going to have to pick one to be in New Zealand, I would have picked Biggie. What did you know about the article? Something about a hack, hacker group getting payback on like Fox or PBS. So they hacked this article into like their reputable news sources and it just got traction from that. It was a hoax, maliciously posted by the hacker group Lausik to show their disappointment for the documentary that PBS aired on WikiLeaks. After the news confirmed that it was fake, it stayed in cultural consciousness and gained a bit of detail over the years such as Tupac meeting up with Jacinda regularly. But what if that was all true? What would that mean for hip hop in New Zealand? So I'm off to Oakland. No, Auckland. To chill with two New Zealand hip hop artists. Guess what I'm here with? Meet Kings. He's a Māori Samoan, three-time platinum singer, songwriter, rapper, and record producer. And meet Mellowdown. He's a New Zealand MC, rapper, and urban poet of Samoan Pākehā and Māori heritage. Bronson, aka Mellow Downs, Kings. How has Tupac influenced your career? Probably, man, honestly, changes, and it's probably a bit of a cliche answer, mm. but changes the song just because it was so popular mm. on radio and stuff, and the messaging behind that song, like I see no trends, work with that music was like. Whoa, what is that? It was new. I think in terms of his poetry and like his narrative and his legacy, like that's something growing up I strive to want to kind of be like, just like mm. the things that he did for his community and just like the, the impact that his voice had. And um, I think he wrote a book called A Rose That Grew From Concrete. With that... the sonnets? With the word. <laughs> With the poem? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, oh, sonnets. Oh, oh, sonnets. Oh, sonnets. Oh, yo. I'm fancy, yeah, 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 yeah. Sonnets. I'm an out of there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah that, that book was pretty pretty mean, just like, it's like, oh, this guy was actually a poet poet. If Tupac was alive today in New Zealand, how do you think that would affect New Zealand hip hop? I reckon if he was older, he'd probably be over the music scene by now. He'd probably be listening to it like, this is not what I wanted to see come out of this game. I know he was like quite an advocate for change when he was around. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe he would like the little pumps or the new artist, but who, who knows? I feel like he'll come here and suss out, oh shit, so this is what happened to the Modis? This is what happened to all the migrant communities? This is what happened to all the people that are being taken advantage of by the Crown? This is what we're gonna do. I reckon he'll be on that kind of shit. Handy. Yo, with a little bit of rap on the side. I don't know, I could be wrong. He might just <laughs> be at Calendar Girls every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Do you think that there's a New Zealand hip hop artist that has kind of the same influence as Tupac? Ish, I'm gonna say something. I reckon this dude. Oh, yeah. I, I say that because you're messaging. Your messaging oh, I appreciate is appreciate it, man. That yo, means a lot. That's, bro. that's true. Yo. I, I think so. So you can say it back if you want, but up to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. <laughs> Nah, but if I'm being completely honest, I feel like I just by witnessing what I've seen in the community in the hood, like South Auckland, West Auckland, Poetics always there, like. Mm. True. And he's got kind of, I guess like Tupac had that kind of like presence about him, and I feel that's what like Poetic has as well. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but on a serious note, rest in peace, Tupac. He, Yo, yes, for we it. love you. His legacy will live forever. Forever. Honestly, I started this really hopeful. I was like, please, please be living in New Zealand. But then I've got another theory because Tupac believed in reincarnation and he died in 1996 and I was born in 1996. And because he's just so great and I'm so great. He might have, I might be, so I might be in New Zealand. So that, so I'm Matt Williams. Um, I teach at the School of Psychology at Massey University, and I do research on a few different things, including misinformation and conspiracy theories. How do you think the internet has changed the culture of misinformation? Conspiracy theories and misinformation have existed for a really long time, right? There's actually records going back to the time of the ancient Romans showing that conspiracy theories were spreading even back then. And chances are humans have been finding ways to trick each other right back to the times when we were living in caves. Mm. But the internet has given people a platform to share misinformation, conspiracy theories with others really, really quickly. And sometimes in ways that can be monetized. Yeah, more money, more problems. So Tupac, Elvis, and Michael Jackson are all three celebrities that have conspiracy theories that they're still alive and in hiding. Uh -huh. Out of all three, which one would you like to see in a surprise concert? Look, that's a really tough one, but um, when I was growing up, for whatever reason, there was just always one CD knocking around, and that was a single of California Love, and that was kind of the soundtrack to a lot of fun times playing volleyball, dodgeball, just general mucking around, so I'm gonna have to go with Tupac Shakur. Oh, you're a Tupac boy, mm -hmm. you are. So if Tupac was alive, <laughs> where in New Zealand would he be living? In my house. In, in my garage. house? Yeah. We're the same age, so... Wow, you're young. Might be my soulmate. <laughs> Tessie, Mike, check. What's up? It's me. I'm a rapper. And I'm a full-time schnecker. Hey, gangsters. We've posed the question. Is Tupac alive and well in New Zealand? Is there any evidence to support that? Not really. So I guess it's time to face the music, eh? A hoax is a hoax. But Tupac did say that people die and legends live forever. And his death, it deeply affected us all. So maybe we've been using the rumours to deal with it and make us feel better. But sometimes making ourselves feel better means feeling sad for a little while. But like Uncle Puck said, I know you're fed up, but keep your head up. So you guys were like around when he was popping off, eh? Kind of, yeah. Oh, well, you were old. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Now that you put it that way, yeah. Because yeah. I was born when he died. <laughs> yeah, I was like 15 when he passed away. Holy shit. Nah, that's oh, <laughs> <fuck laughs> <you. laughs> I was like trying to do the math, but hold on. <laughs>